Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in DeSoto, Missouri. Uh, today we embark, on, uh, we embark on a journey inside out. I hope you've taken the opportunity to watch this, uh, this fun and entertaining a animated movie. Uh, if you have not been able to watch uh, the movie Inside Out, of course, you know, you, you always have the option of <laughs> kind of winging it, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, there's not going to be another public showing, at least not here, but uh, I'll tell you what we can do. Just give us a call. At the church, you'll see the number uh, below near the end of the service. Uh, just give us a call, and we'll see if we can't work something out. Of course, I know that as many, uh, as many opportunities as there are to view movies such as Inside Out, I'm sure that you'll be able to find uh, an opportunity in some way. Uh, it's just one of, those, uh, one of those ways that we just get a little different insight uh, into the whole thing about what's on the inside and, and how it comes out. You know, I'm not here to judge. Uh, today's scripture reading, uh, let me reach back and grab my Bible. Today's scripture reading uh, is rather short. It comes from the Apostle Paul's letter uh, to the Ephesians. This letter is, in many ways, uh, sort of like a, a letter written to friends, if you will. Uh, the Apostle spent some three years, some three years teaching and building up the believers uh, in, in their faith, okay? Uh, and so this letter, uh, what it does is, so it's a letter from a friend, but also from a teacher. And so you can kind of hear the elements of both in this. You get the teaching aspect of it, but you can also get the, the emotional aspect of it as well. And so here then, this reading from Ephesians chapter 4 Verses 17 through 24. Now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord. You must no longer live as the Gentiles live in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance and hardness of heart. They have lost all sensitivity and have abandoned themselves to licentiousness, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learned Christ. For surely you have heard about Him and were taught in Him as truth is in Jesus. Uh, you were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourself with the new self, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. May God bless the reading of God's Word this day. Let us pray. God, as we come to You even now, may our ears be open to hear new truths from Your Word. May our eyes be open so that we may take a good look inside of who we are and who You created us to be. And may our hearts be open so that all we hear and all that we see, that they may lead us ever closer to You. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, 
There's a phrase uh, that I have on a post-it note uh, on my desk uh, at my office at home. Uh, it is there to remind me of a very important principle of life. The post-it note says this. It says, all truth is God's truth. All truth is God's truth. Now that statement, or one very close to it, has been attributed to the likes of St. Augustine, uh, Thomas Aquinas, uh, John Calvin, among others. All truth is God's truth. Some things I like about that phrase, uh, maybe the most of what I like about that phrase, is that uh, something such as that can kind of trigger a little bit of pushback, okay, uh, among different ideologies or philosophies. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, here's what I mean. Uh, there, you know, this is where that ultra-conservative uh, may say something like, wait a minute now, God, God does not need to be associated with the evils of the world that happen to be true. To which I might reply, well, this is not about God being associated with that which is evil. In fact, uh, recognizing something as evil only happens when we can identify that which is not evil. You know, if something inside of you is telling, this does not look like God, well, there could be a really good chance that it isn't, okay? Uh, in a similar way, uh, there are those uh, secular liberals, we will call them, the secular liberals, who will, secular liberals who will say, well, now, don't credit God for something it took science to discover. Well, just because science discovered gravity in the mid-1600s does not mean that, si that gravity did not exist prior to that. Anytime science discovers a new truth, 
Uh, I kind of see it as science finally catching up to, to one more truth in a multiplicity of truths about God. Uh, science has not discovered something as much as it has confirmed that which already exists, even existed since the dawn of, of, of time. All truth is God's truth. Now, I say these things to say this, that regardless of whether it comes from a science lab or a, or a think tank or a, a school of theology, if there is a truth, and if it's followed, uh, that this truth can lead to a healthier, a more complete, more fulfilling life, then I believe that it has to come from God because God is the source of all that is good. The God who is the source of creation of the universe um, is not to be tethered. Is not to be tethered by the age of the earth or the age of the universe for that matter. It is not to be bound by those lines that separate good or evil uh, or even by, even by a movement uh, toward knowing that which can bring about emotional health. Now, I've opened with this because I believe, I believe that is how we need to approach the subject of our emotional well-being. Now, some may question this approach and, you know, isn't it that you're just supposed to love God and, and, and you just sort of take it as it comes? You know, whatever God gives you, isn't that the way to fulfilling life? Well, I can't speak for you, but I've kind of lived long enough and done enough things uh, in the world. Uh, just, you know, I've just lived my life, but I have less and less of a taste for saying something like that to a child who's raised in an abusive home, who had no choice. I have not so much of a taste to tell that to a rape victim or to a person who's paralyzed because they were hit by a drunk driver. I, I, I have a hard time being able to, to say something like that uh, to the person who receives, the parent who receives a phone call about their son or daughter uh, and an unfinished text message, which could very well have been that which led to the tragedy and the call. I've been there. It, it, it's hard to deal with. It just really is. That's, that's life, though. You know, it's been my experience that instances such as those I've just mentioned, they bring with them that push and pull of a desire to, to be compliant, uh, take it as it is, and or uh, the need to ask questions, to, to simply try to make sense of it all. Um, verse 18 of Ephesians chapter 4 uh, kind of touches on this in some way. Uh, talks of being, uh, being alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance or hardness of heart. I want to focus on that last part, hardness of heart. And that's a very interesting phrase that we all need to consider as we move forward uh, into this inside out. All right? Uh, the picture, the word picture of hardness of heart is of a callus that forms when a piece of the body is, is broken or, or torn or the friction of it, okay? A broken bone uh, in its own way creates a callus at the spot of the break. When it heals, a torn piece of skin, when it heals, can form a callus. A uh, callus can also form a, from repeated friction on a very specific part of the body. In other words, some trauma has come to a body part, and a byproduct of the healing is the forming of tissue. And here's where it's really important to pay attention. A forming of tissue, tissue that has become less sensitive, less feeling, to new trauma. Um, anybody, do you know anybody who's had their heart broken so many times they've almost forgotten how to love? They've become less sensitive to the emotion of love. They have become calloused. Uh, not unlike the character in this movie, uh, Riley. Uh, who struggles to feel any emotion other than the one that seems to be yelling the loudest. Uh, when, when you have been broken, when you have been broken and you begin to be calloused, what emotion is it that yells the most loudly from you? Uh, is it fear? 
Is it joy? Is it anger? Is it, is it disgust? Is it sadness? Which emotion seems to be ruling the day when those things happen? Which, which one of those emotions seems to be ruling the day right now in your life? Maybe your way of acting, uh, of acting out the loudest voice is not like those people from Ephesus. You know, those people from Ephesus seem to be indulging in some disgustingly impure actions. Maybe that's not you, and I would, would want to believe that it's not you, okay? Uh, maybe, but, but maybe, maybe you just throw the silent treatment to everyone who comes in contact with you. Maybe yours is a, is a tongue lashing just waiting to happen uh, given the, the first person who asks you a question or, or looks at you wrong. Maybe, maybe you exercise your emotional demons through, I don't know, maybe you exercise your emotional demons through spending. And because of that, you kind of have credit card debt up to, well, let's just say, I don't know, up to here, okay? And about the last thing, if any of those things are a part of your life, about the last thing that we may want to hear is to somebody say, you just need to put your faith in God. Let me ask you this question, all right? How close does God need to be before you feel as if God even knows you exist? Now, that's kind of a crazy question, but I want to ask that again. How close does God need to be before you can feel as if God even knows you exist. How close? Is it down the street? Is it in a, in a church building? Is it, uh, is it in a bar? Is it, is it in your car as you edge closer to the speed limit? How close does God need to be? Is it in your bed at night? Or closer still, in your heart, in your stomach, in your head? Is it in your mind? Does God need to be in your mind so that you may know that God, so that you can feel as if God knows that you exist? Uh, Christian author Peter Scazzaro reminds us that Scripture reveals God as one who feels. Here's some examples uh, that Scazzaro brings in front of us. He says that in creation, God saw that it was good, that it was very good. But then not long after that, because of some very poor decisions on the part of humanity, Genesis chapter 6, or verse six, chapter 6, verse 6 tells us that the Lord regretted that He had made human beings on the earth and that His heart was deeply troubled. And Jeremiah, the prophet, uh, was telling to anybody who would listen, he said, The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until He fully accomplishes the purposes of His heart. An earlier prophet, Hosea, wrote this of God, How can I hand you over, Israel? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. You hear the feelings of that when it comes to Jesus. Scazzaro reminds us uh, that, you know, Jesus in Luke, Luke wrote this, he said, At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Or the, the, uh, the apostle Mark uh, the writer of the Gospel of Mark, that recorded that Jesus looked at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. He said to the man, stretch out your hand. Or maybe we go to the night of His arrest when Matthew was recording this and, and Matthew indicated that Jesus was, was sorrowful and troubled and He said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Uh, we can take comfort I believe that Scripture tells us we can take comfort in knowing that God is a God who feels and that when you feel joy or anger or distress or being overwhelmed, that God knows you because God has been there and continues to be there in you. Maybe it's as Paul did write in Ephesians, for surely you have heard about Him and were taught in Him the truth. The truth is in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And earlier, um, I mentioned St. Augustine, uh, thought to be the originator of that phrase, all truth is God's truth. Um, here... Here on this uh, first leg 
of our journey inside out. I would want you to know this. As we begin this journey, uh, something else that, uh, that St. Augustine said more and more, it seems to become more about life and more. It just begins to, be, begins to make more sense, and I hope it does to you as well. Uh, St. Augustine said this. He said, Grant, Lord, that I may know myself, that I may know Thee. That I may know myself, that I may know Thee. What was it that the Apostle Paul says? He said this, To be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to clothe yourselves with the new self created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. God, that I may know myself, that I may know Thee. Renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know, it's, it's not that your mind so much as gets a, a fresh update or a fresh coat of paint. Being renewed in the spirit of your mind is like your mind is being given a new birth. And if you think about it, what is it about a new birth, about the young mind, that it is fresh, that it sees everything that is new, that it is like a sponge, that it is ready to make new memories, to, to learn new practices, to absorb all that it means to be, uh, to be that new self. That's what that means, renewed in the spirit of your mind. Uh, and here's the best of news. It's not, that it's, it's, it's not even so much that it's your new self. It is that it is your true self. It is your truest self, one that is created by God and redeemed by the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, that author I mentioned earlier, Peter Scazzaro, uh, he gives us some direction in how we can clothe ourselves with the new self, the, the true self. And he makes quite a bit of sense. He, he gives f four different things, so it's not that, not, not, not that much longer. He tells us four things. As we begin to take off, you know, we might be going into some uncharted territory. It may not be, uh, you know, it, it may be our first time into this. So we might be traveling a little bit into the unknown. But he gives us four things to remember as we begin this time. And so I would encourage you uh, to, to kind of uh, take note of these things as we begin our journey inside out. First of all, Pay attention to your interior in silence and solitude. In other words, slow down and listen. Slow down and listen. If you haven't already, carve out some time. You know, it doesn't have to be this enormous amount of time. It just needs to be some time to, to slow down and listen, to get rid of the noise and just listen in the silence. Slow down and listen. Secondly, is to find trusted companions. Now this almost like it goes in opposition of the slowing down and being silent. It kind of means kind of being by yourself, but the truth of the matter is we don't go through this alone, and so you find trusted companions. Now, we are not built to go it alone, uh, and if you're, you're not sure who it needs to be, I would just encourage you to ask God. Ask God to lead you to those people uh, those individuals who would be able to walk with you in this, uh, in this time. All right, you know, St. Andrews, we are offering uh, an in-person uh, group uh, on Tuesday afternoons at 1.30. If you live within the proximity of our church and you can come and, you know, make that time, Tuesdays at 1.30, and we'll begin to, you know, I, hopefully you'll be able to try to uh, kind of say these things. Uh, hopefully we can earn your trust uh, by being those trusted companions. And so if you're close enough to be in person and you have that schedule and you're able to do that, that's 1.30 on Tuesdays. If, uh, if you don't live in the area or that time is just not your time, uh, we also offer on Tuesday evening a virtual meeting. It's Tuesdays at 7 p.m. where that would be that time where you can have other individuals whom we would want to also uh, earn your trust as well. Uh, you're going to need to communicate with church if you'd like to do this because we will be able to, to fix you up uh, with a link. Uh, we'll send it to you uh, through email. There'll be a link, and then you'll be able to, to log into that. If that group gets too large, we've got uh, our computer program set up in, in such a way that we could break it down into smaller groups, and that's really just so you can develop uh, these mean, meaningful relationships and that you, it, it's so much easier in the smaller group to be able to, to, to trust and to be trusted. And so you would have that option as well. So 
Uh, first of all, you know, slow down, listen. Second of all, find uh, a trusted companion. The third thing in this is to move out of your comfort zone. Okay, now you're probably thinking, well, that kind of sounds like numbers one and two together. I'm kind of out of my comfort zone. Uh, but you know what uh, Scazzaro said, you know, if t- to change the way we have lived for 20 or 30 or 50 or 60 years, uh, it, it, sometimes it may take nothing short of a revolution. Uh, whether it's going to be all this huge revolution or whether it's just going to be a series of minor skirmishes, uh, that's going to be each of us as individuals. Uh, but the thing would be that we would all be ready and willing to move outside of our comfort zone. But really, as we move outside of our comfort zone, we are moving toward our truest self. The fourth thing, all right, and you're thinking, well, why wasn't this first? Well, it's the fourth thing. Pray for courage, for courage. You see, this is not just, this is not about gathering information so that you can sound really insightful at those family gatherings. This, um, This is about recognizing the person whom God has created you to be the truest self that God has created you to be. And so, fourthly, would be to pray for courage. You slow down, listen, you find trusted companions, you prepare yourself to move out of your comfort zone, and then you pray for courage. Is all of this easy? (laughs) Well, I kind of doubt it. But... You know, if it, were, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. That's kind of the way I see it. And, you know, it's as the Apostle Paul said, that is not the way we learned of Christ. What I desire for you is that God may clothe you with a new state of mind as we move forward. And so as we move forward, I would just simply ask you to pray with me. God of of so many wonders, wonders that are beyond our our imagination, beyond our thoughts, so, so high. And yet, your wonders are so close as well, close to the to the next beat of our heart and to the next breath that we take. We give ourselves to you. We give to you our joy, our anger, our our sadness, our our disgust, our fear. And as we peel back the layers of who you have created us to be. Our prayer is that we may have the courage to take that next step in following you. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for being a part of of what we're doing here at St. Andrews. Be sure to, uh, uh, to email us or to leave a phone or make a phone call and leave a message to us if you'd like a guide uh, for helping you kind of walk through this. Remember those four things, of course. Uh, And if you're not already signed up, sign up for our email list. That way you can really keep up to date on everything that's going on here at St. Andrews. And if you want to be a part of uh, the virtual group uh, or the Tuesday group, you know, but the virtual group, make sure you communicate that as well so that we'd be able to send you a link. In short, we would like for you to be a part of who we are uh, because, because who we are will be more complete with your presence. Uh, Our contact information will appear at the end of the service. And so as we all begin this, this journey inside out, that we could always remember in beginning that faith, hope, and love abide these three. But the greatest of these is love. Amen.